shooting the breeze. What up, everybody? Live on a Wednesday night, or whenever you're watching. It is John Marks. Subscribe, comment, like, follow, whatever you do. At John Marks Media, Delco Steve will be along in a few. What is up, everybody? The show tonight is shooting the breeze. We got a bunch of stuff to talk about, and we'll start off with the mock draft. Some Paul George rumors, which I think are more just obvious uh, dot connecting. And the fact, Paul George doesn't seem all that happy with what's going on in, in Los Angeles with the Clippers right now. We'll connect some of those dots. Also, later on in the program, we have a very active chat here on the show with a lot of, I mean, we have regulars. It's It's been pretty cool to watch uh kind of watch the show come together and seeing the same people on here night after night not everybody's on here every night but a lot of the regulars vince dean philly sports pride's been on there a lot oz is on here all the time sean o'neill michael richmond normally checks in like yeah maybe like 9 15 he jumps on justin of tennessee's on here a lot anyway we appreciate all the regulars if you're watching on Twitter or YouTube or wherever you're watching, we'd like you to get involved in the chat. We want you to comment on the YouTube page, but also comment in here. But tonight, we're contractually and legally obligated to answer all of your questions. And this includes Delco Steve as well. And you can get really personal with Delco Steve. You can ask him anything. And we are absolutely legally and contractually obligated to answer it honestly. Ask us whatever you want. We're gonna we're gonna keep uh, keep track of them. We can hit the little star on the thing right here, and uh, and there you go. And then we will go through some of them at the end of the show, towards the end of the show, and we will answer them. So you can ask anything personal, work related, like with Delco Steve. You could you, you can really personal with him. Ask him sexual questions. But uh, anyway. <laughs> um, it's tonight's like shooting the breeze is really code for there's not an obvious lead to the show. When, when if Hassan Reddick gets traded, that's going to be the lead. It's like in, on WIP or on the, even the fanatic for that matter, but lesser to the fanatic. But don't you know, if you're a regular WIP listener, don't you kind of know what the shows are going to talk about on most days, right? If there's not something obvious, then you kind of cook something up about the Eagles. You come up with a, scenario or like for the most part like that's kind of what we did that's what we do and when i put up shooting the breeze i'm not getting paid by wip to grind five days a week uh doing this so it's one of the things i respect about people that do this for a living even the skip baylesses who i i can't stand and Stephen a and everybody that does the take shows Five days a week, they have to act, they have to act like they care because they don't trust me. They don't care about LeBron James. They don't care about all these subjects that they're talking about. But the best ones make you believe that they care because it's their job. They're actors. They're entertainers. This is what they're going to do. So on the radio, five days a week. How many days do you think I came in that I actually wanted to talk about the subject matter that we were talking about? That's why whenever I go to do whatever I do next. I'm going to I'm going to have to do some of that grinding, but I'm not going to grind in the same way. You got to like 5 days a week, you got to be ready to talk about something that's going to get people that that respond and call in and, and are interested if you want to have great ratings. It's that simple. The shows that don't do that are the shows that don't have great ratings. The shows that say, "Oh, well we talk too much Eagles. I like what WIP talk Eagles. I want to talk Sixers." the fanatic they're the shows that don't get great ratings so now with with scott Masseller at the at the fanatic he knows you need to talk nfl and you need to grind on nfl subjects especially this time of year when they're there so it's not like there's not nfl stuff here there's just like i can't i can't grind on anything tonight so we're going to do some draft stuff so that's coming up um we'll start off with that and um and a couple other things right here but let's bring in let's bring in delco steve already to the program because there's not and honestly steve i don't even remember this about you you really are you're a draft nut we talk about existing players in the nfl we'll talk about how well oh yeah well he was at eastern michigan he was really good coming out he had a third round grade and he slipped to the fourth round and i was like well, how do you remember all this shit 
but you do. It's just stupid, man. It's just my it's my uh, little gift. <laughs> sure. sure. Well, it's here. And once free agency passes, and now we're about to enter April here, we got another week and a half left to go of March. But when the heavy hitters start coming out with the mocks and you start looking for them. So you had a Daniel Jeremiah and a Mel Kuyper mock yep. that came out between yesterday. They're 3.0s. Is it a 3.0? Both of them. Wow. So this is the third one. All right. So yep. everybody wants to know with the, the Eagles. And I actually have less interest in the Eagles than I do with, with the quarterbacks and everything else that's going on in the first round. But just for the record, and this is no surprise because a, a lot of times what the what the national mockers do is they say, all right, what's the obvious need of the Eagles and what's the Eagles MO? Well, they're always going to say an offensive line or a defensive lineman because the Eagles draft on the offensive line and the defensive line. And it's obvious they need help at a corner. They need a young corner. They need help now. They need a young corner in the future. So both guys have Nate Wiggins from Clemson as the pick going at number 22 to the Eagles. And Daniel Jeremiah, his little capsule says, the Eagles' pass defense was atrocious last season. Wiggins is the most natural cover man in this year's draft. And then Mel Kuyper says the following. Says, uh, ba 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 uh, Wiggins could step in and play a huge role for a team with Super Bowl aspirations. 6'1", 173. He's slender, but has elite speed. He ran a blazing 4.28, 40-yard dash at the combine. That sounds good to me. So, I mean, like, like this early on, I'd be completely happy with a corner in the first round. I don't know if they're going to do it, but. I'll um, believe it when I say it. Yeah, I tend to agree. Tend to agree. It never I, seems to work out with the corner. And I swear to God, these mocks, like when we pick in this range, it's always a corner or something. It's like always. They not, do they not keep pay attention to what our draft no. history usually is? It's no. just like it's just never that. Like they do tend to select receivers in this kind of area or like a more skill position type player, but then they always go back to like the D line or the best D tackle or the best D edge rusher or something like that. Yes. If there's not an offensive lineman there. Well, because they're doing but it for Andre 33 Dillard teams. was the same pick. He yeah. was like a tw- I think he was like 22 or 23. Yeah, I remember a couple of years ago, we had Daniel Jeremiah on weekly leading up to the draft, like last six weeks before the draft. And DJ's great, but he had him taking Patrick Queen in the first round. So nope. you can't, right. So you can't, we have a relationship with him. He comes on whenever he wants. He comes on before the draft and he gets paid for that. But like other, other times when we re- reach out to him, he comes on all the time and he's great on the air. So we can't, we can't be like, Yo, DJ, there's a 0% chance they're taking a linebacker in Ooh. the first round. But, you know, he comes on and says, yeah, I'm going to take a Patrick Queen. And it's like, no, they're not taking Patrick Queen. I would lo- – like, see, when you see something like that, like, especially something like that, it's like, all right, well, did someone tip you that? And then – Nah. And and if if that is the case, then who was it? Because right. they clearly aren't the person you want to be talking to. Yeah. Then, I, I, just, we, I've uh, talked about we, this – I've talked about this a lot with Ike and – I don't think that I don't think that any of these guys have any actual inside info. Now, Daniel Jeremiah has has a history with the Eagles. Used to work in the Eagles front office, as, as many people know. I don't think that he's getting inside information to the, where that's just forming his opinion. I just right. think he's looking at it based on how he looks at a lot of other teams like that. So, no, I don't think that he has any inf- it's, inside information. But yeah, but like that's going to be a need for the Eagles every year. Until Howie Roseman isn't the GM, so you could literally play that. You could play that out every single year. Oh, I'm going to slot a linebacker into the first round. It's never going to happen. You're just you're going to be wrong every time. So don't even waste much. your time. Just take a shot somewhere else. Who's the best available offensive lineman? Do that. Pretty pretty much the the most um the most interesting thing of these mock drafts and Steve and I were talking about before we came on and it it I mean it's awesome. Caleb Williams is going to be number one. It's a matter of who you think is going to be two. Will it be Drake May? Will it be Jaden Daniels? And they actually disagree. Because, yeah, uh, yeah, DJ has uh, Jaden uh, has Drake May, and um, and Kuiper has has uh, Jaden Daniels going too. I, I mean, I don't know who the Patriots prefer. Drake May. I mean, Jaden Daniels came in, kind of came out of nowhere, right? It's, it's, Joe Burrow came out of nowhere as well. His his last year there. But Drake May and Caleb Williams have been talked about for years. These guys were supposed to be the top quarterbacks and the top draft picks. If you look back to the last two seasons, they were being May had a shot at. to be the number one last year. Yeah, and, and and May actually didn't have a good year last year. But yeah. 
they don't care about that. This guy is athletic. He can run. He's got a, an unbelievable arm. He's got every attribute you're looking for in a young franchise quarterback. And Caleb Williams does as well. Uh, he's you know, probably, he, he's like the once in a 10 year prospect. A lot of people say like a, a biggest prospect to come out since Andrew Luck. Uh, and then Jaden Daniels kind of came on and he's, he's going to be the third pick. Or he's going to be the second pick. It's going to go one, two, three quarterbacks. Who would you, if you had number two, what would you do, Steve? Do you like da Daniels or Drake May? Well, I think we had this conversation at one point. I prefer both of them over Caleb, just because I think Caleb's a nut job. But uh, if you're putting a gun to my head, I'm probably taking Jaden. Well, but we also know Williams is going to go number one. So I like, I won't even, I, I don't even want to, because yes. because I I agree with you. I I don't I don't think it's a risk because it's the everybody would take Caleb Williams. Doesn't mean it's going to work out. Right. Like he's got to me, he's got red flags, Caleb Williams. Yep. Did you see the story today with uh Jalen Johnson or mm -hmm. the corner? Is it mm -hmm. saying it? Oh, you can't bring that Hollywood attitude. Yep. Yeah. That's going to, that's already going to go swimmingly well. It's already that's, starting. He's not even on the team yet. And that's the problem is, and you saw that at USC after he elected not to play in the bowl game and the, the, the players were, you could tell the players felt a certain way about it and felt a certain way about him. But he's going to be the number one overall pick. I think the most intriguing thing with this draft, and this always happens, you look at a guy like J.J. McCarthy, and if you watch watch them at Michigan, I don't know how many people out there watch how, how much they watch them at Michigan. Maybe you watch the national championship game or whatever. But like for a, a large portion of the season, they didn't really want him throwing the ball. They, won, one, McCarthy, they won one game without throwing the ball in the second hand. Yep. Yeah, they – and and it's one of the reasons why Jim Harbaugh is such a good head coach. He was protecting McCarthy a lot. He didn't want McCarthy making mistakes. JJ McCarthy, I think, is only twenty one. So, uh, like, you look at a guy like Bo Nix, who now is is also mocked to go in the first round. At least I think by Kuiper. He's Kuiper. Wait, what is he twenty six? Bo Nix nah, or something like that. Bo Nix is older. Or no, I think uh, Michael Penix is older than Bo Nix. I mean, okay, so it's Penix that. that's old. No, but even even isn't isn't Daniels old too? Daniels isn't. It's the two old ones are Knicks and Penix. Dan Daniels is he's on twenty. His... He's twenty three. Is he's twenty three though? He will turn twenty four in December. Jaden Daniels. So he's okay. not. He's not. He's not that young. Because JJ McCarthy is. Yeah, he's 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 his third year. He's twenty one. He's going to play yeah. his entire rookie year at twenty one years old. Yep. So you think about that. But and, and if Penix is how old's Penix? Bonix is good. Well, Bonix, I guess Bo, uh, Bonix is older. Or Bonix is be twenty. It's twenty four. It'll be twenty five <laughs> in February. Sorry, you just got me. I just got lost in the sauce there. Penix turns twenty four in May, so you're looking at two these two quarterbacks that are twenty going to be 20, 24, Both will be twenty four and twenty five. Yep. And McCarthy's only twenty one. So I, I knew that it's at some point these guys would start rising up the draft, and I heard a lot of people say JJ McCarthy because if you, his pro day. He's a guy that he that that the teams show up to the pro day or the guys work him out and teams work him out. They're like, wow, this guy's got because he's got really, re really, really good tools. So uh Daniel Jeremiah hasn't gone fourth in a in a trade with the Vikings. Well, that's the only problem with Kuiper's board compared to uh trades, Daniel Jeremiah's is the trades. So right. Kuiper could have some of this kind of crazy thought process as well, but we can't obviously. Mix oh, so, let, so let me give you let me give you Kuipers. Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, Marvin Harrison four, and Malik Neighbors, the wide receiver out of LSU five. One, two, yep. three, four, five. And it very easily could shake out like that. There's some teams, according to people out there, that like neighbors better than oh, Marvin Harrison go, Jr. Go to six and they have a Dunze. So they have three right. he has three quarterbacks and then three wide receivers right off the boards, which would be kind of nutty. It would be. But then you look at a guy like Daniel Jeremiah, and he says, no, 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 no. J.J. McCarthy's going to going to get valued, and Minnesota's going to jump up and grab him. Apparently, the Giants are interested in in J.J. McCarthy, and he was he was at the facility, and he was he met with the Giants. He was at the facility, and he was touring everything. Doesn't mean they're going to draft him, but if the Vikings want him, don't be surprised if the Vikings try to jump the Giants and get him before. They already made they already made a preemptive move getting the second first round pick from the Texans. Correct. So they had the ammo to do it. My thing with the Giants is I feel like they wouldn't have brought in Drew Locke as a 
as a backup if they were going to you know, try and make sure they get McCarthy? Because I, no matter what, if they even if they want McCarthy, they can't get him at six. I doubt they get him at six. So you don't think he's going to be there? I, I think one of these teams are going to go get him. So it's so they're gonna they're gonna pinpoint the Giants as the mark to to be. So right. if the Giants want them, they're gonna have to go up as well because right. someone's gonna be trying to jump them. And it it doesn't it doesn't have to be now. It doesn't. It could be two minutes before the fourth pick happens, and someone could jump the four. And the, let's say the Cardinals make the pick, they take Harrison. Well, someone could now jump the five. Right. It's just. So if someone thinks the Giants are pulling the trigger and they want them, they're going to go get in front of the Giants. And if the Giants are are thinking someone's going to go get them, they're going to have to go up that once, pay that price for that one spot to get their guy. Yep. Daniel Jeremiah has uh, has Michael Penix going 13 to the Raiders. And he's the first guy that I've heard that, that says that he's going to go in the first round. But all it takes is a team that says, we really like this guy and he'll be a first round draft pick. It, it, it This happens every year with these quarterbacks. I, they Brandon Weeder was 29 and went in the first round to the Browns. Horrible. <laughs> no, that, absolutely horrible. And then it's, and and then Kuiper has Bo Nix going – is it 12? Yep, to the Broncos. Yes, he's got J.J. McCarthy going 11 to the Vikings, and then Bo Nix going to the Broncos at 12. So, I don't know, man. It's crazy. Well, but, the other one – what was the other – I think the – Gaynor Jeremiah had the Broncos taking Brock Bowers. That doesn't make sense to me. It's like, why, why would they take Brock Bowers? They have no, they need so much more other things than us. Brock a Bowers is end. a stud. I love Brock Bowers. I think he's going to be a monster. I think he's going to buck the trends of these rookie guys. He's going to be like Laporta this year where he actually puts up Man. numbers as a rookie. It's just, it makes no sense to me. Or is it going to be Kyle no Pitts? Me. I see Kyle. I'm telling you, Kyle Pitts is going to pop this year with Kirk Cousins. It's going to pop. It's going to pop. I don't disagree. He's I hate, good. I Hate it's that he went to Florida, but it's going to pop. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I, I got listen. When you need so much, when you need so much on your team, and you're drafting a tight end like they did with with Kyle Pitts, it doesn't make any sense. And that was oh, a top five pick. Terrible, terrible pick. Terrible pick. But he's still. I think he's he's got all the tools to be. Hold on. Was was Pitts so. after Jamar Chase? Or did he like, go the pick before? Jamar Chase was five to the Bengals. So, so he went four. Pitts went four. Yep. So they they friggin' took a tight end over all those receivers. Jalen yeah, Chase Waddle. Yep. Unbelievable. Well, when we so when we traded out of six, I was under the impression the well, this is just my brain thinking draft goes that there's no way the Bengals were taking a receiver there with all with because that's when they had all the offensive line issues. Burrow just came off the knee. And then like I was trying to talk myself up. They weren't gonna bring that Pene, Pene Sewell was was yep. there and yep. he's been great. He's awesome. Yeah, he's, he's been great. So you can argue maybe they would they be better off with an offensive lineman, but Chase is so good. Oh, Chase is amazing. And I was but as soon as we traded out of six, I'm like, if the Bengals don't take Chase at five, I'm gonna just revolt. Like I'm it's gonna be over. I love Devontae Smith. I would trade two of them for Jamar Chase. Well, they wish the Eagles are smart that draft because they realized they weren't getting they weren't they weren't gonna get Jamar Chase. Yep. So they said we'll still get a uh, we'll still get a wide receiver. We'll trade back. They, if you remember, you remember what they wanted to do. According to a lot of the reporting, they were trying to get up to two to draft Zach Wilson. And the Jets really? weren't budging. Yeah, and the Jets weren't. No, budging. I missed that. Yeah, the Jets, the Jets weren't budging. And when they realized that, oh that my god, thank god, pick, that's when they traded out. I'm telling you, the, the Eagles have gotten so lucky. And I'm a Howie supporter. They've gotten, they've gotten, they've gotten lucky. Imagine if Russell Wilson said, "I want to go play in Philly." He's an Eagle. Yep. They would try to get him for all this, for all, all the, the, the denialism out there of Eagles fans are like, oh, no, that was just BS. And I was one of the ones saying to go get Russell Wilson. They were trying. They were sniffing around big time. Who was it back in the day that wouldn't let Andy go get Russell Wilson? Was that Howie, too, in the draft? No, they they no, they no, got jumped. The, the Seahawks jumped yep. them. The Seahawks traded up. They were going to take took them. A, they were going to take them with the Foles pick. The, so the, the yes, the famous, the famous story that Daniel Jeremiah actually – tells because he was in the front office and he was the guy that was kind of networking with Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson texted Daniel Jeremiah and said like draft me and I'm going to win championships for the city or something like that. Russell Wilson, Daniel Jeremiah. I, now would he, how, what if, how would he have played in Philadelphia? Russell Wilson. I don't think 
like the, not not the well. Broncos <laughs> Broncos let's ride Wilson would would last six seconds here. Like that would be in this town persona, as cheesy as he is. Yeah. Well, do you think okay? So let's say Andy gets him. Do what happens here? How long is Andy here for? You know what? Like we were actually saying with with I remember doing the radio that year, and I was saying with Nick Foles. I was like, can Nick Foles actually save Andy's job? And yeah, he comes in and he plays great. And it's like, well, why would you move on from Andy Reid if you got a good young quarterback? And then he didn't really do a whole heck of a lot that yeah. rookie year. He could have. He definitely could have. He said, um, so this is Daniel Jeremiah. I said, at the end of the interview, you always ask for the player's number so you can get in touch with them. He asked for my number, and then I would get text messages of, text messages from him periodically saying if the Eagles draft me, I will lead the Eagles to championships. He would send me these text messages. Do you think he said that to every team that he got the number from? <laughs> I don't think the Eagles are alone. <laughs> I don't think the he's, Eagles going through, he's going through his roster. The day of the <laughs> draft, hit him up. <laughs> the first day of the draft, he texted me. If the Eagles draft me, I'll lead them to championships. We really liked him. We thought there was a really good chance. He was going to end up being an Eagle. And then of course, Seattle ends up taking him. Yeah. So they jumped him. But yeah, so all right. Well, listen, this is uh, this is exciting stuff because uh, I just wanted to see if there's any other notable things here. Um, and Chop Robinson hasn't really went up the board. Remember last last round the mocks, everybody had the Eagles taking Chop yep. Robinson. So yeah, he's now at the it's bottom of the first round now. Now he's moving down, so he he may not even be a first round pick after this is all said and done. This Xavier Worthy dude, the wide receiver dude. from Texas. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Woo. Yeah, I love dude. His forty when he crossed the finish line. Did you hear him go like, "Oh yeah!" Like he knew, he knew he had it. it. I was just like, "Oh, that's awesome." He knew like, it. What was the? Did he have a pro day or? I, I saw something with him today. There was a picture with him today. There's actually two Texas wide receivers that. Uh, oh, Aiden or Austin, Mitchell. Yeah, Mitchell. Yeah, Mitchell. Yeah, that that Kuiper has him going. Aiden, Aiden Mitchell. I'm pretty sure it's Aiden Mitchell. It's A, -A D O N A I. Adonai. I'll tell you what, Tech Texas. Sarkeesian has really turned that program around, man. They're ready to go. And with the NILs and the money that they're going to be paying, I, guys. Dude, they have they got Quentin Ewers to come back, and they still have Archie yeah. Nay. Well, it was their pro day because Quentin Ewers was throwing to all the receivers during the pro day because okay. he wanted to get himself out there because oh, he's yeah, going to be trying to get drafted next year. So he was like, hey, hey I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll take a pro, pro day. Pro day. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, so that I guess that was yesterday that they were doing, but. Yeah, but, uh, man. He's, he's fast. He's fast. Though I, right. one of these mocks has him going to the Chiefs at the end of the first round. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, Kuiper has a Aiden Mitchell, however we're going to pronounce that. The, so the other Texas wide receiver. Well, and who, who also who, ran a really good 40. Somebody also had the Jets taken. Oh, they have both. They both have Aiden Mitchell, Adane Mitchell, however, whatever we're going with. Somebody well no so the Jets the Jets trade with the Chargers and they take Marvin, Marvin Harrison, Harrison Jr. Jr. They have Garrett Wilson they just they're paying they're Mike Williams on like that, that, that came out million. Yeah. it came out right before Mike Williams signed so oh it did okay gotcha it yeah, came yeah, out yeah. right before Mike Williams signed yeah they they're not taking a, another oh, I mean I mean then speaking why couldn't they because if he's on a one year deal you're rolling it out those three for, and you're they're got to be going all in for this year with Rodgers they have to be. I don't disagree, but I mean, if they your, if they to don't your, to your point of rookie offensive lineman, how much of a and they and they went well, they, veteran on the offensive line. They got three new off. They got three yeah, new offensive linemen better. already. Yeah. They traded for Moses from Baltimore. They signed a guard from Baltimore, and then they signed Smith out of Dallas, who we know is one of the best left tackles. Period. Not yep. maybe not currently, but of all time, and but he's still talented. He's just got to stay healthy. Yeah. So they, could they draft another offensive lineman? Of course they could, but they need all the weapons they can get to make Rodgers. It's all that matters right last, now. Se yeah. last season. Pop. All right, it's Will Will Brinson, CBS Sports, and then we'll move on. I, has I love Will Brinson? Has Drake? Have, do you listen? Have you listened to his podcast? I don't. Any? I love him on uh with on the You Better You Bet, but I do. I follow him. He's great. Yeah, he is good. I I uh, I've, I've had him on before. He's uh. He's from North Carolina. He's a he's yeah, a good. He's sense an of NC humor. State fan. Yeah, yeah. He's he's funny. 
All right, so so he has uh, Harrison Jr. going two. He's got Jane Daniels three. So Drake May goes to Washington. I think it's I I think May is going to end up in in Washington. I would bet right now that. So he has pretty much the same thing. Harrison four, and then he has JJ McCarthy going fifth. Uh, and Minnesota jumps up to the Chargers spot at five and grabs and grabs JJ JJ McCarthy. So every major mocker right now has JJ McCarthy moving up big time in this draft. Wow, well, I I meant to slide this in earlier when we were talking about McCarthy. Yeah, did they not have him throw the ball a lot? Of course, like obviously you look at the stats, you see it. But at least when he was throwing the ball, he was over seventy percent accuracy. It, yeah, no, he's he was. Hit, he's hitting his targets. He's doing what he's supposed to be doing. It's not like oh, this guy can't throw the ball, and that's why we're running the ball more. But he was hitting his targets, and he was taking advantage of the opportunities he was getting. These 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 organizations want the raw talent and then they like they worry less about that kind of yeah. stuff plus he was coached by Harbaugh so they know he's coming into the NFL having been coached by an NFL head coach for the most part that only helps him but so, I would say it more the fact that like it's not like a J it's not even like a Jalen Hurts that where you're concerned about his throwing ability no not at all the ball so much but he proven he can throw the ball he, he's done that yeah I think they didn't do it as much I think the biggest thing for him will be the game's going to be really fast this first year the NFL game's going to be really fast so it it may take him it may, may take him a year as opposed to you had he wouldn't um, be the guy that's starting week one. He'd be of the four guys, he wouldn't be starting week yeah, one. Yeah, like look at look look at what CJ Stroud did in this first year, which is like unbelievable. The dude's a stud. Uh I wouldn't expect that from JJ McCarthy year one. But no. And the crazier Will, things have happened as well. We, uh see Will Brinson, you're an idiot. He has Lad McConkey. Going number 22 to the Eagles. A, f- a first-round draft pick? If Vlad McConkie goes in the first round, I will eat my sock. I, like, <laughs> literally. Like, the, no. No, no, no. No. No, no, no? No. I, no, no, no. I, th- I think he's older, too. Uh, he's 22. He'll be 23 in November. So he's not a, he's not a spring chicken. Hey, listen. Um. Said, he's a baller. Uh, he's he's yeah. definitely like he's a gamer. Like he goes out and he played through yeah. all that that bad leg injury this end of last season. Yeah, I'd say here here's the only reason why you would use a first round draft pick on a wide receiver if you know that Devontae Smith or AJ Brown's not going to be back, and there's no way that Howie's not going to re-sign Devontae Smith right. his draft pick. And you know, and you think AJ's a pain in the ass, and you're going to move on from him. It makes no sense to draft a wide receiver as much as as much as I love wide receivers, and if they drafted him, it would be the best thing ever. It oh, is, give me, if they're drafting a receiver at the end of the first round, give me the Florida State guy, Keenan Coleman. Like, dude, he's a stud. Yeah. I, if they drop Lab McConkey at the end of the first round, I will cry. <laughs> You're going to eat your shoe. There you go. All right. Well, we'll keep you updated. We'll probably be doing this once a week at least going forward. Um, all right. So, Paul George, 76ers. By the way, 76ers only a half a game up on the Pacers for the last spots in, in the non play in game playoff spot. So if the season ended right now, they, they played one more game than the Pacers have. So they're the sixth seed. Um, so they, they don't watch it. They're going to be, in a, they're, they could be in a playoff, a play in game. Uh, but as of right now, they're not hoping bead comes back and they go at least go on a little bit of a run, but Besides that, and Embiid's practicing, and he could, he he couldn't should be back relatively soon. So Paul George and the Clippers, and let me just say this going in: I don't really want Paul George here. I know he's like he he's, he's thirty four. Yeah, I don't want I don't want Paul George here. Like if this is really and this and you know this is what Daryl Morey's doing, he's hoping that he gets lucky with a lottery ticket like Paul George, to where he's given a max contract or whatever, and he comes here and he says, "Oh, now I have Embiid and Maxi and Paul George." And you're still not going to freaking win. You st- probably still don't have a good enough team. But it's like that's a, that's the team that Daryl Morey wants to put out there. But anyway, Paul George told reporters Sunday said that. We want to be a team that's consistent and we want to establish an identity. I've always spoken about having an identity and I think it's extremely important right now. I don't think we have an identity. So like they've lost a couple games in a row. I wonder if there's, there's a lot, a lot of some egos in that locker room. You have, you have Kawhi, you have James Harden, you have Paul George, you know, you have guys the, that have been making a lot the of fact money that that team hasn't imploded is insane to me. And they right. played actually very well. They have played well this year. 
after that rough start, Harden's Harden's like Harden's a good player, but guy like in the playoffs, everybody knows what's going to happen. Even though he he did score a couple of forty point or thirty point games in the playoffs last year, but so John Hollinger, formerly of ESPN, now he's with the Athletic. He said, "Keep an eye on Paul George." By the way, if there was a max extension sitting around for him, he would have signed it by now. I think it's fair to say a couple of cap room teams in the East are monitoring this, and that's a clear that's a clear indication of the 76ers. I and and it yeah, makes there can't a lot be of too many cap room teams anyway. <laughs> right. So Indiana apparently is interested, but they also can they have. Hal Burton's making a lot of money. Siakam, uh, unless he's going to sign for a lot less. So Paul George is actually pretty interesting on that team. Now that I think about it. Yeah, he would. Yeah, he, he, I mean, he would be more interesting there than he would be here. I, I like to me, I, it just doesn't, he's a West coast guy. He wants to stay on the West coast. The only way he'd be coming here is because it's a max salary. It's a max contract. Yeah. And, him. Yeah. You, you need, you need players in this town with the way that the media and the fans, how we act, you can't have a thin-skinned guy that's going to be like, man, why are these guys, why are they booing us? You know, we just won five in a row before this game right here. You know, like you can't, you have to have guys that are wired to play in town. I just don't know if Paul George is that guy. And frankly, what the, what, like, what has he, what has he done since he won the, went to the Clippers? They've done nothing but disappoint. Yep. I'm out. I, they seriously, I'm out. But the problem is, that, then what do you do? And I, I don't have an answer for that. Yeah, we picked a terrible year to have the open cap space. Oh, man. Go get LeBron. Draft Bronny and then Le- let LeBron come here. Not that I'm a LeBron guy, but it'd be well, John, John says, why not? Why wouldn't we go after him? Well, John Jay, you're right. Because what else are you going to do? Yeah. If, what's And well, then what what's the do? max offer going to be? Is it going to be a three-year, four-year? How are we going about this? Because those max four. offers all depend on the four. years, too. Four years. Yeah, and no, and they four. they can if they if they position everything right they can max them and then they would still have between fifteen and twenty million dollars in cap space to to spend, but that also means that they don't like they're like Buddy Heald's not coming back a bunch of the players aren't coming back and then oh that's when you reflip the whole bench because they all these max teams they do that every year yep yeah they have a for couple sure. of bench guys that stay around and then they flip the you know the next five six guys so here's here's John here's I guess here's my my answer, and it's not a really good answer, but isn't this like kind of your last chance with Embiid? Isn't this the last? If they bring in, if they were to bring in Paul George, and it doesn't work, and we're now three years from now, and they haven't, I mean, it'd be great if they brought in Paul George, and even if they made an Eastern Conference Final or an NBA Finals, it'd be, I would think that's successful. If they can't get over the freaking hump, but. I mean, God, I just – I don't want to bring in a guy that, that's went to the Clippers and has either been injured or just they haven't been good enough. There's chemistry issues. He says the team doesn't have an identity. Well, you're a freaking you're – a, you're a max player on the team. And who are you – who exactly are you calling out? And who is he talking to by saying that? Is that is that to, is that to Harden? You know what I mean? Is that yeah, but to the Kawhi? Thing is, the thing is, it should, the culture should be him and Kawhi. They're the ones that have been there. Right. Everyone else has gotten there in the last year. So you're taking a shot at yourself if you're saying there's not a culture there. And, and, but what does that mean they don't have an identity? Like, do, do they not play yeah. defense? Are they inconsistent? Like, who exactly is he talking to? This, to say something like that, he's talking to somebody that's on the team. Or the coach. Or he's or he's talking to Ty Lue. Yeah, I don't know. Man. It's, it makes no sense to me in all honesty. It's just... it. If you're not happy in your situation, just say you're not happy in your situation and don't blame it on the identity of the team or culture of the team. Yeah, seriously. All right, well, there you go. So you're you're out in the chat, thumbs up or thumbs down on Paul George. It's uh, There's a lot of dot connecting. Sixers are going to be in on him for sure. It's a matter of – I just don't think he I, – I don't think he wants to come here. I think it's a leverage play. And he would come here if this is like, yeah, they're offering the max and there's no other teams that can give me the max. And I, I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to sign here. But is there any other like notable guys that are available this, like that are actually going to be free agents this off season? Um, yes, but I would, I would. Bet. The only one I knew was Siakam and he already resigned. No, um, I, I'm, I'm blanking on. Uh, the, the number one option was Maxi on what I just pulled up. 
Yeah, it always yeah. is. And it's like, but a lot of times when you pull it up, it's like, well, these players aren't going to be. No, it's uh, DeMar DeRozan, I know, is a, and I'm, I'm actually a big DeMar DeRozan fan. Uh, just cause he like, he's not just chucking threes and whatever. I don't think he's going to cost a whole heck of a lot. I was hoping they would actually well, trade for him. Well, I'm not uh, going to read this list anymore because Tobias Harris is number eight. So I'm not going to go right. past that because if he's eight, then I definitely don't want anyone below him. All right. If LeBron was willing to come here, what would you say? I mean, I'm not a LeBron guy by any means, but hell, just hell. If gonna, yeah. If they're going to, if it's going to get them, it's going to get them into contention right away. Yeah. It's because that's going to get you all the guys that want to you know, take one more run with LeBron. Oh man, do you, could you? But um, just a Matt LeBron coming to Philly, he's he's not going to happen. He's not going to do it. Oh no! But you well, that's what I'm saying. Draft Bronny if he comes out, then he's then you well, have to give that, yourself that, an automatic shot. That's how you get him. Yeah, the, the little Bronny's going to get overdrafted because yep, these loser. <laughs> you're going to get the last. Draft. You're going to get the last year of his dad. <laughs> he might not even come out. He didn't. Uh, he didn't play a whole lot this. Uh, no, nah, he might his, not with his heart issue. No, he might not. But we'll see. Um, all right. So, so if, if you didn't, weren't here at the beginning of the show, we're shooting the breeze tonight. So, any questions that you have, we are legally required to answer it and answer it truthfully. All right. So, put it in the chat, oh, and man. and Steve and both Steve and I will star it and we'll put it up there and we'll have to answer. This could be personal. This could be work related. Why do I feel like I'm going to get a lot worse questions than you are? Uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah I mean, you can add. Seem fair. Now, Steve, personal <laughs> things. If you don't, if you don't feel like I, I will, I will answer truthfully. If you don't want to answer some of the personal ones, you don't certainly don't have to. But um, but yeah. So put them out there right we'll now. We'll see what we can do. We will, we'll see what uh, we can do. Yep, we will see what we can do. I will, and I hate to call it "ask me anything" because that's the like the I don't know if they still do it on. on Joe and John, but they would do like ask, like AMA, ask, <laughs> ask me anything. And it's like, all right, like, you know, it's, it, it, it's like, uh, what's all your iPod? What, what are your, what are the, what are the, the first five songs on your iPod? Like uh, Barack Obama, when he was running for president, was like, well, here's what's on my iPod. Let's well, not 2008. So we don't need to do ask me anything, but whatever. John, why do you, so here's one. Why do I have a <laughs> fake background? Because otherwise you're looking at a gray wall and people complained at the gray wall because I really don't have anywhere to go in my house. As I showed people the other night, what I would have to do is get rid of the gymnastics net, mat and the bar. And then I would have to set up something over here. I don't have any, I don't have an extra bedroom. I don't have, I don't have anything. I don't have any extra room. I literally have to like build an addition on my house to, to do something. So that's why. Um, <laughs> All right. Oh, that's not a bad idea, Jerry. That's a great idea for next week. Craig Craigslist Price is Right. Oh, I Delco love Price is Right. Yep. Love I'll, go, is right. I'll go right to Delco Craigslist and I'll get some that's items good. up for bid. I did it before with, I, I did it with Ike and he didn't really get it. And people were asking me to do it again. And I was like, yeah, he wasn't into it. So I'm not going to do it if he wasn't into it. But I, I like, I found a, I found a, like a whole, Duffel bag full of smut magazines. <laughs> On Craigslist. Florida. We did Florida Craigslist. Because I think they were playing they were playing a Florida team. I think the Eagles were playing a, a, like Tampa or something. So I went to Tampa's Craigslist and I found, or was it Craigslist or was it Marketplace? It might have been a combination of of Marketplace. Whatever. Yeah. Craigslist, right. And it was like, and it it wasn't even Playboys. It was like high society, hustler. <laughs> real like smutty do they even where would you even buy them anymore do you have to go to the adult world to buy them or no clue not even <laughs> if you're still buying that kind of stuff you don't have a phone that you could just type free porn into i bro there's an adult world 10 minutes from my house are you free is that part of your rotation of uh stops so it's right next to the to a fried <laughs> chicken place it's excuse me a roasted <laughs> chicken place that has been around for uh, forever and has really, really good chicken. So the, the adult world's on the, it's like an intersection. It's Ridge Pike to the right and it's Germantown Pike to the left. And there's an adult world right in the beginning, right in the middle. So back in the day, this place probably had some pretty high volume, but now there's no way anybody goes into it. Like who the hell's going into an adult world? Like what kind of, what kind of loser 
is going into <laughs> yeah. adult world in twenty twenty. It's a it's a it's a front at this point. <laughs> no, I think there's no like there are people that go in there, but it's probably like really really slimy. Like They're on walking in on like watch this. lists on probation. Yeah, yeah, guys on probation, <laughs> you know, registered sex sex offenders and things like that. Uh, all right, ninety seven five return coming soon. Uh, I, I I'll say this that <laughs> my guy I, just texted me said, "Do you have a coupon for Adult World?" <laughs> I do not have any Adult World coupons. Like, what do they even have in Adult World these days? What are you buying in Adult World? <laughs> Do they have booze in there? What are you doing when you're going in there? Who who's going into a oh. world and what are they doing in there? <laughs> maybe you should, maybe it, we should send you in. We should send you in undercover and see if we can idea. see what's going on. Is it like is there prostitution in there? What exactly is going on <laughs> in in this adult world? I uh, I could only imagine. I could only imagine. I don't want to imagine. All right, so I'll say 975. You want to find out for real? <laughs> I don't want to. I do not. I'm sorry that I brought it up. <laughs> All right, ninety-seven five return coming soon. Well, Delco Steve, I can I can say this that uh, it it again it would be illegal for me to discuss any audio focused jobs with companies until my non compete expires with WIP, and that would be at the end of March. So in April, I can officially speak to uh, a company that has a job that is looking to hire me that's audio focused. I could do TV right now. I could do other digital stuff if it's not audio focused. Um, it's why I guess I'm, I would be allowed to do this and sell it if I wanted to. But I can say this with utmost certainty. I will not be returning to 97.5 The Fanatic. I will not be working at Breaking news. Yeah, this is not breaking news. Will Mike Pistinelli be working at 97.5 The Fanatic? That's what I reported <laughs> last week, and I stand by my report. We'll see what happens there, but I will not be I will not be working at 97.5 The Fanatic. I mean, why would they – I mean, honestly, why would they want to hire me? I'm only very successful on the radio. I have a ton of advertisers that are ready to spend money. They're they're brutal in the ratings. Right? They have terrible ratings. They obviously need help on, on any of their shows. Why would they Why would they need to hire me? Why would they want to hire me? So it just doesn't make all retread, sense. retread, man. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, um, all right. What do we got to hear? All right. Here we go. That's a good one. Delco Steve, CVS, Rite Aid, or Walgreens? Oh, uh, well, kill Rite Aid. It's whatever. Totally. Uh, I'd well, fuck Wal I'd fuck Walgreens and marry CVS. <laughs> so if you would eliminate one, it would be right. Rite Aid. See, I don't. There's a there's a Rite Aid kind of near me. I, I go to the like, CVS is my pharmacy. Yeah, so I, I, oh dude, I I cashed in a coupon today at CVS. So I go to Walgreens for cards for like wedding cards and stuff like that because it's the closest one to my house. But there's I have one of them all close to my like within you know within a mile of my house. Huh. So I so go to all three of them. But yeah, I never go to Rite. Aid. If I go to Rite Aid, it's for last resort. So does this make me a loser and a bad husband? So I went oh, to. Okay. So I, my daughter last night was up pretty much all night. I've been up since 2 a.m. because she's been up since 2 a.m. And she like snores, which you shouldn't be doing at two years old. And her her tonsils are really inflamed. She got a, she did not have strep throat. So I took her to the doctor. It doesn't have strep throat, but we're worried about the snoring. So anyway, I, I've been up. So I was at the doctor. So my wife's like, hey, can you stop at CVS and can you buy? She's looking for like some kind of um, some kind of uh, an, iron, an iron supplement. So I'm like, yeah, sure. No problem. So I go in and the first thing I do is go to the app and I'm like, damn, I don't have any active coupons. Cause I used, I used the 30% off coupon last week <laughs> to buy. What did I buy last week for 30% save cash too? save, save nine bucks on it. Woo. Well, I talked about it on a Friday that I had the, yep. I had a red hot 30% off coupon. I used yeah, it. That was your big weekend plans. Right. So they don't <laughs> normally send another coupon, the same coupon until Wednesday or Thursday of the next week. So I didn't have an active coupon. So I'm on the app and I'm like, oh, wow. So I can save five bucks on any CVS store brand purchase of $15 or more. So, so you went for the CVS brand of iron? 
that make me a bad husband that I went CVS no. brand iron over? No. It's the same active ingredients. I'm not buying something that's that's less potent. No. It's the same milligrams. It's, it's same probably the else. same exact it's thing. It's the same it's thing. With a, with a different stamp on it. No, I, but it's, it's what I say to her. Because like I, I, I instead of buying instead of buying Advil, I'll buy generic Advil. I'll buy yeah. CVS Advil because it's it's significantly cheaper. And then the five dollar off fifteen. So I ended up saving. You got it you for know, like half price. You got the good. Yeah, it's fine. I got I got it for I got it for from the list price of the regular thing, which was like twenty five yeah, bucks. Yeah, I saved ten bucks on on what I would have paid for the regular one. So that that's not that's normal. That's okay because she because she says to me, she goes, "You probably bought the generic." I'm like, "No, no, no, they didn't have the they didn't have it." She's like, "Yeah, right. I know they did." All right. So this is what you got to do in the future now. Now you just got to buy one of like all the name brand stuff. Keep that bottle. Put it in the in box. The cab, and then, you know, pour it in. So I've done that before with baby formula. <laughs> okay. Um, you're, if you're giving the generic baby formula, that might be a little different. But it's not, but it's not, it wasn't baby formula. It was like after they're one and you stop breastfeeding, but you still want to give them more than just regular milk. Yeah. So we were using this special stuff and the generic stuff was significantly less. Yeah, and but that could also, be like, you know, they're the same they stuff. Be, I don't know about that. I don't know anything about babies, so I can't really comment. But I feel like if you're actually eating it, it's for like nutrition, it could be different. It could right, be like more us, preservatives and stuff like that. I don't know. Ask us anything. Was work for home not an option with with me at WIP? Um so when I when I initially told management which was in like may so in may i had told them i'm not coming back i can't continue to do this when my contract's up in in november i'm i'm leaving i'm done and i just wanted to give you guys plenty of time and like you know like this is all good i love all you guys or whatever but like i just can't like i, I need something different i can't drive down here every day like it's, it's killing me so they were like they were like well what if you worked from home uh a couple days a week and it's just, it's not fair to the show and it's not fair to, uh, not fair to the frequency, not fair to the call letters. I wasn't going to, if Mike's coming in every day, if we were doing a digital show or something like this and we're working from home two days a week or whatever, like that's fine. But I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to be working from home a couple of days a week. I could work from home if I was sick or if something came up or whatever, they were always willing to let me work from home, but I didn't want to make that an option going, going forward and regular because no one else is doing it. So if no one else is doing it, it's like, well, why is Mark's able to work from home two days a week? Because he like doesn't want to be away from his kids. Like, you know, F that. So no, I, I decided that I was, uh, no, wasn't going to do that. So, uh, any, any ones here that, um, any ones here about, uh, that you see here, Steve, I did not hear crossing broad podcast a couple days ago. Speculation about my future did not. Uh, but I, I love uh, I love Russ. Russ love, Russ lives near me in in uh, in Rursford. I see him at the ice cream place every once in a while. He's the man. Give him that inside scoop. No, there is no there is no scoop. So he is he certainly doesn't have it. I wish I had a scoop to whatever. Uh, let me see. Will Steve hang out with Herb on a mandate in Delco and vlog it? That's a big ask for free. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that that would. I don't think that would work. Herb's dip, so Herb. A lot of people asking Herb. I guess he called into WIP today. He, I was texting with him, and I told him let's shoot for tomorrow night because he's like, eh, what time again? And it's like, yeah, you uh, don't want to be up till ten o'clock. So I understand that. Uh, I'll put you on the spot because you know these guys way better than I do. You do FMK Herb OG Wade Chuck. <laughs> Um, so is Mary the best? I mean, it's, it's, so no, I, it's, I, you, okay. So yeah, so Mary, you like, you could deal with them the best, but Herb. like her emoji and Chuck, Chuck I, I would I be kill, like, I you had the most, you had the most fun with probably in a given moment and then kill obviously. Yeah. Yeah. No, Chuck would be the one that I killed. And I like Chuck actually texted me the other day and was like, dude, I miss you so much. Uh, uh, I, I like Chuck, but o oh, I, I like OG and Herb is Herb. Herb's the best. He really is. All right. If the Phillies would have won the World Series, would you have actually followed through with the Harper tattoo or get divorced? Um, so people don't know the story. I told Bryce Harper in spring training, 
I'm like, yeah, I have Nick Foles tattooed on my back because they won Super Bowl and I said I would do it. So if you win the World Series this year, I'll get you tattooed on my back next to Nick Foles. Because then as I said to my wife, I'm like, they're not winning the World Series. There's a 0% chance they're winning the World Series. And I was sitting I was sitting at the at the ballpark game four. The Phillies are up two games to one in the World Series with, you know, staring down the barrel of a Bryce tattoo, Bryce Harper tattoo on my back and my wife telling me, like, I will divorce you if you get it. And I'm like, honey, they're, they're like, I'm not getting it. I'm just saying I'm going to get it. I'm not getting it. I, I mean, got, it can't get any worse than it already is. So <laughs> I would have got like- I would have gotten the tattoo on the back. And I don't I mean, think I don't she think didn't she divorce you after the Foles one. So why would she divorce you after the Harper one? Because she told me not to do that stuff anymore, and I did it anyway. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. You're you already broke the rule. It's if you just add to it, it's not really well, like any. And I also brought her on the air, and I was I brought her on the air, and I'm like, yeah, I kind of told Bryce Harper that I would get a ta- I would get him tattooed on my back, and she was pissed at me for doing that because she didn't know about it until I brought her live on the air and told her that. <laughs> That's and, <laughs> no, but I know, but like, but it was the wife talk segment that we do, right? So it's like, yeah. all right, let's do wife talk. And like, what I, I I keep saying this to her, it's a bit. You have to understand everything that I every t- thing that I think is a bit. Like, don't take it personally. My life's a until bit. you have a Nick Foles tattoo on your back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, someone called me out saying I don't know what what the scoop is. I know what what the scoop is. I've been the what the scoop. It's closed now. It's sad. Went on a date in high school to what's the scoop? What's it? What is it? It's a, just an ice cream place. What's the scoop? A Delco what's ice the scoop? cream? Yeah. So now I don't even know what it is now. It's changed so many names since what's the scoop. What scoop was awesome though. Mm. Great stuff. Uh, yeah. What, what's your go-to ice cream? Uh, now it's for anything with caramel. <laughs> anything with the salted caramel. I'm in. I have salted caramel ice cream upstairs. Vanilla salted over. caramel. Turkey Let's Hill. Go. And my kids don't like it. Love it. So I made I made these little apple pies. I by mistake I like I like chicken pot pie. I'll make chicken pot pie. So I, they didn't have any for whatever reason after the Super Bowl. Nobody had pie crust. I, I mean I guess they get used up for the Super Bowl. I don't know. Nobody had pie crust. So I, I by mistake made but I bought the little pie crust that they make uh, like sixteen. You put it in the muffin tin and they make these little pies. So I'm like you know what I'll yep. make these little apple pies. So I made but these little apple pies. caramel. Oh, yeah. I'm drooling already. Oh, my God. And the kids are like, we don't like this ice cream. And I'm like, what? Like, we want vanilla. I'm like, we don't have you the. So I have you should have disowned them right there. I have mint chocolate chip, cookies and cream, and salted caramel. And they want regular vanilla. I'm like, I don't have that regular vanilla. I got this because it's good with apple pie. But we don't want it. So, <laughs> so I have a full <laughs> thing of salted caramel ice cream upstairs, which is so good. You should just disown them right now. For sure. Uh, I did not used to cruise Admiral Wilson Boulevard, but I did used to go to the, uh, <laughs> I did used to go to the, uh, the fantasy show bar when I was 18. Might've been, you, you probably didn't, it was probably gone by the time you were of age. Yeah. Right? The fantasy know, show yeah. bar. They used to, at the Phillies games, they used to give out dollar admissions, or you could come with your, your ticket stub from whatever sporting event you get in for a dollar. Otherwise it was 20 bucks to get in. And it was in Jersey. So it was 18 to get in. They didn't serve alcohol. So you just get hammered before you go. Yeah. And they're full, they're fully nude too. And so I, we used to at 18, it's like, yeah, let's go to the show bar. And we would go to the show bar all the time, but it's a taco bell. Now the fancy show bar in Mount E from New Jersey. It's a taco. Bell. All right. Oh my God. Well, one taco to another. There you go. Uh, all right. Any more here? Are you seeing? Uh, there's been a lot of comments here. Uh, Are you going back to 97.5 Del Coste? Yeah. Sign me up. Interesting. College old adult world, four stars on Google. So, what are some of the comments? <laughs> oh, Christ. There was, I'd like to there see was, some of the I thought comments. I had one. Yeah. Uh, where was the one I had? Mm. Really should have uh, clicked it. I got one here. Most awkward fan encounter. That's that's what I wanted. All right. Well, I don't think that I don't think that this person w- would be watching this. But <laughs> right when I started working with Miss Anelli, I you y- y- you learn from your mistakes, right? And I was at some event and I gave my cell number out to this listener who was like, "Yeah, he sounded cool or whatever." And like we were going like some other event he's like well you know text me or whatever when you're going so what i didn't know is this dude was gonna 
call and text me all the time and always wanted to hang out. And I'm, I'm not a big hangout guy. I wasn't a hangout guy then. I work all the time and I want to sleep. And like, I just like, dude, I'm not looking to go out on a Wednesday night. Like, I'm not looking to hang out with you. I got friends that I don't see. From, right. you know, from if, I'm gonna use my, yeah. if I'm going to use my free time to hang out with people, I'm going to hang out with people that, that I, I actually yeah. have a relationship with. Yeah. And he was a nice guy. It was nothing personal, but it's just like, right. why yeah. is this guy, this guy fucking call me and get, text me all the time to where it's like, all right, I just got to stop responding to him because he's not getting, he's not getting it. Right. Yep. So then I just like, I don't respond, don't respond, don't respond. I show up at an event and this dude's like crying and telling me, he's like, he's like I'm not gay, man. I'm not gay. You think I'm gay for you? I'm not gay, man. And I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, now I do. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I didn't get any messages from you. Like, what do you know? Like, I didn't know. Like, I don't know. You might like, I no, I I don't know what happened. I didn't get these text messages. You somehow maybe got blocked or something. <laughs> yeah, so he was he was yelling at me in Chickies and Pete's that he wasn't gay. And he thought that I thought that he was gay, and that's why I stopped. Well, I didn't think you were, but now I do. I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> concerned. <laughs> Oh man. Uh any other good ones here right there? Wor worst athlete celeb that you met. Worst athlete celeb. I hate Fletcher Cox. How long have you been waiting to say that one? <laughs> I, I mean I, I I would say it before. He's just he he's always such a dick. Always such a dick, Fletcher Cox. I'm not saying he's a bad his teammates really like yeah. him. I know that. The, the 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 young defensive lineman liked him. He hated the media. And he was just always, always such a dick, Fletcher Cox. So I did not like him. Um, trying to think who else. For the most part, the athletes are cool. Um, Bob Costas, I hate. He's not an athlete, but I hate Bob Costas. Um, baseball players are normally kind of prickly. And like, hockey players are always very cool, although boring. Football players understand the business of things. So when you do interviews, for the most part, they they'll give you – you know, they'll give you some good stuff. Jaron Hurts actually, I, I was I was not happy with uh with the interview he did with us this past year in yeah, September. You mentioned that before. Yeah, he just he, didn't, he gave us nothing. It was terrible. And I was just like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to like I don't care if he's Jalen Hurts. If he's gonna come on and he's gonna come on and he sounded like a dick, he did. Um I don't have any interest in that. So can't think I of accidentally, I accidentally met uh Robbie Gold in Vegas. Uh really the the weekend of the, when the NFL, yeah, Robbie Gold, the kicker, at a bar at uh, Resorts World, I think it was, and he was cool as hell. He sort of like we just like it just was. We were just sitting there, and my buddy's like, "Is that Robbie Gold?" We were sitting at the same table. We were already talking to him, and I'm like, "No shit, it is Robbie Gold." Start going over like, "Oh, like what were you doing for the draft?" And he was just like running us through for like what he was doing, and he bought us like bought us a couple of rounds of drinks. Cool, dude. really? Yep. Yeah, that's so cool. I'm trying to think the coolest. Obviously, BG's the man, and and I knew Brandon for a while. Um, I'm trying to think of just like a random athlete that was. Uh, so I, I'll I'll tell this story, and then we'll move on here because we're getting towards the end here. When I was at the World Series in 2022 in Houston, and after they won, was it was it Game One that they won? Whatever game they came back and they won, it was an extras. I think it was Game Two. Was it Game Two? All right. I think they went My, down one out, didn't they? They they could have. I, I don't remember anything. But we, we, we went back to the hotel, uh, to the Phillies hotel. So I'm back there with with Brazier, and we had like sales execs that are that were there that were staying in the hotel. And the Phillies, the Phillies are a great organization. They they paid for their employees to come to the World Series. So you have all the Phillies employees, and I'm not talking about baseball staff, I'm talking about like support staff, people that worked for the Phillies. So you had a lot of people that I knew that were there that just worked for the Phillies. Just for shits and gigs, they did win game one. Okay. Now that was where they came back. Six so, five, yeah. So we're I'm I'm in the Phillies hotel. John Middleton, the owner, is just slamming this pizza and talking to me while he's just he's got this pizza and he's like <laughs> talking to me and like, it's like cheese everywhere. <laughs> and like I and I have to like look at him and I like I trying to keep a straight face because I'm like, Oh my God, this guy's just like all like pizza, like everywhere. And he's talking to me. Oh no, all this pizza slice of pizza. Yes. But th that was, uh, that was one of the coolest nights. That was one of the coolest nights ever because like the, the, everybody was celebrating. They won game one of the world series. I was, I was 
drinking with LA and I think Fransky went to bed early that night because uh he wanted to get up earlier the next day. Was it like yeah. before the game ended <laughs> early? No, no, like but, oh. but no, he no, he no. Fransky like Fransky had a couple pops with us back in the back in the hotel, but LA, you know, gotcha. like everybody was like, all right, it's time to go, and I'm just drinking straight vodka. And I'm like, where, why is it? Well, and, and Red Bull. And they're like, where's everybody going? What do you mean? What do you mean you're going up to your room? One of those you mean I'm supposed to go to bed after I drink a gallon of Red Bull? Yeah, but it's only four o'clock. It's only 4 a.m. What do you mean we're going to bed? Where are we going now? It's like, no. All right. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Uh, any other ones here that you see? If you hosted a new show with someone who in the fill year would also want to work with, prefer in ratings wise. Um, Harry Mays, Jason Martinez, Steve, Delco Steve. Um, I mean, I, obviously I'm not, I'm not going to say people that I've already worked with like Jack, Jack or Ike, but just people that I haven't worked with. Um, I would have, oh, it's a good one, but who's your best intern? <laughs> All right, Steve. All right, Steve. Who between you between you and Jack, who was my favorite intern? When we were there? Yeah. Oh, easily me. You. Easily me. Yeah, you. You were and I love Jack, but you that were was, my, that wasn't even a question. You were you were my favorite intern because you would come in and you rolled up your sleeves and you loved you loved doing audio, you loved editing, you loved doing all that stuff. And Jack was definitely more of a more of the talent type intern. You know what I mean? As you yeah. like right now, with what he's doing is great. No, Steve was. He was one of my, one of my, if not my favorite intern. For All sure. right, but of the guys that have gotten hired, who are you like most proud of? Let's phrase it that way, like that, like best that way. Hmm, it's a good question. Uh, you know, Seltzer, obviously, Sal Chunis was my, he was my intern. I'm really proud of him. I, maybe, maybe James, maybe Seltzer. Just because the fanatic wouldn't hire him to be a full time producer, they kept passing him over and hiring yeah. everybody else. He was great when I was there. He helped me out a ton, like yeah. getting started James, and showing me stuff. James James came over right before I did. He he came yep. over with with Joe and Barchard actually when they when Barchard came over as well. So I was like, I texted Spike the day that's like, wow, Seltzer's going to WIP. I texted Spike and I'm like, yo, he's gonna run circles around your producers. Like this this dude is awesome. And Spike yeah, actually yeah. told Spike actually told him too because James told me he's like you don't know how much that means to me. I'm like, well, bro, it's true. Like I'm not just making it up. Yeah, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. Like, yeah, he, James. He, James, is he did the work. Yeah, James is James is the best. I have um, I, I've had I've, I have a couple interns um that have went on to do TV news out in Denver or down in Florida or whatever. Um, but you know, Delco Steve's probably top three on the list as well as far as interns that i'm proud of just not just not accomplished as much <laughs> not yet not yet it's not over yet not, not over. over yet nope not over yet all right any more out here before uh great popcorn of fantasy show bar tim absolutely <laughs> really really good fake buttery absolutely absolutely uh not I'm, I'm surprised. I'm surprised you guys uh, didn't uh, kill me. I'm really. Am, I'm really. Am. Thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be a lot worse. Questions. Mm. I'm. I'm very thankful. <laughs> All right. What's that behind you? Ah, uh, it's a. It's a compass. It's a map. Map compass. You know, it's a little yeah. mix of the two. Yep. Fletcher Cox blocked me too, Kevin. Actually, and and I had nothing to do with it. It was actually. It was when I worked with Anthony. And, and do you remember when, do you remember when it was like the Thanksgiving game and they were like, la they were getting crushed and they were laughing. Yes. Remember like the, 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 their, their body language on the field was Fletcher seemed really happy and Ant called him on it. And Fletcher, we had, we had him on for a weekly as a weekly spot. Yep. And he was not happy and he blocked me. I didn't even say anything. He blocked me on Twitter. I was collateral damage. Was he, did he still do the weekly after that too? No, it was the last. No, it was, was, last I was gonna say. I'm pretty sure he was done after that, right? Uh, yeah, he was done after that. Yep. Yeah, and we did knew he, it too. We knew. Did it he come in the studio? I'm pretty sure he came in the studio while I was there at one point. Yeah, he probably did. He's a monster. I was just like, holy shit. Yep. Yeah, the athlete, the athlete interview. If you if you get bad ones, I mean, there were years where 
I would say I don't even want to do an equal player because it, it's not good. We had Malcolm Jenkins on one year and he was he was excellent. My lotta was pretty good this year. A lot of times you get guys that uh like they, they don't call in or they're late or their connection sucks. Like they're in they're in the car and they're not on they're not on speaker or they're in Bluetooth and the window's down and they're unreliable. So it's like you gotta make sure that you gotta make sure that you actually have a good player when you do it. Yeah, you got to make sure they got to have to want to give a shit. Yeah, Fletch did do uh, PHLY every week, and I I didn't see it as well, but it was uh, it's called cool. grossest thing you ever experienced working in the studio. <clears throat> I told the story last week, didn't I? When I picked up a cup that I thought was my water, and it was yeah. it was it was Rhea Hughes' yep. Luger cup, Lugie cup. Oh, you did. Oh, you didn't drop her name. <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean, it was it was a Lugie cup. <laughs> yeah that studio uh, that, that studio used to have bananas oranges there'd be like four things of mustard in it it's just, just disgusting and i don't i don't bitch and complain about it i just clean it up because it's easier to do that than be mad about it so i didn't i didn't worry about it but yeah someone asked for my answer i don't have one nothing crazy too crazy happened when i was there no the, stu- the studios are gross but I wasn't in the studios too much. I was in behind the scenes. And but that's a studio. You were in a production studio a lot. You were in that back studio. That oh, Pat, yeah. Pat Egan used to call Mike as Dwayne from Swedesburg from that studio. Yeah. Look, Mike, look right, out. right behind Mike's back. Yeah. Yeah. Mike had no idea. And Pat, Pat be taunting them. Yeah. That, uh, that, that one wasn't too bad, though. There was, there, what was, there was always like crazy bathroom stories at Bala. It was like always weird bathroom stories at Bala. Bloody, bloody boogers would be in front of the urinals. Yeah, no, that, that, yeah, those bathrooms are gross. As much as I like being in Bell, I didn't, you know, it wasn't necessarily the, the most, gr- it wasn't the greatest accommodations. Rob Cherry or Jolly? Listen, I'm a Rob Cherry guy straight up. You don't even have to say Herman Jolly. That's not even a question. What, one of the coolest things, when you listen to, to guys for a long time, and I listened to Rob since I was, you know, whenever he was in WIP in the 90s, when I got to work with him one time, I was like, dude, I just like, I just checked off something off the bucket list. I'm working with Rob Cherry, you know? And he was, I love Rob. No, Rob's awesome. Rob is, uh, Rob's one of my favorites. So as far as other, uh, other guys, and I, and I love, I love the WIP guys. I really do. I, people sh- will shit on Julio for his takes or his opinions or whatever. Joe Julio is awesome. I love ESP. John Johnson's are, like, I love John Johnson. I would like to, I, I would like to work with John Johnson. John Johnson's awesome. He's a great guy. So there we go. All right. Any more here before we get out of here? Uh, Did Oz Oz ask a – I didn't see Oz's question. He's saying that – I'm sorry, we're getting a ton of things in here, so I didn't see what the question was that Oz Uh, I think that was – Oz was that question. was the disgusting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, I am contractually obligated to do it. Uh, <laughs> you gave up your name. <laughs> yeah, there was bo- there was bloody boogers in in the WIP bathroom too. People flick them on the wall. It's unbelievable, unbelievable. I don't know why I get bloody boogers too in the winter. Although I haven't had them this year. Yeah, haven't had them. Anyway, all right. Well. Delco, Steve, we got uh, we got one more night. You're going to be away on Friday, but uh, Nicole Gallo, 5K run and walk in honor of Steve's sister, is coming up on Sunday. And all proceeds going towards Nicole Gallo si- Sunshine and Bubbles Scholarship. There's a 5K. There's also a kids' fun run, and there's going to be a party afterwards. So uh, just go to Steve's Twitter, Gallo3310. Donate. Um, just check it out. You know what I mean? Like if you can't donate, fine, just check it out and see what it's all about. If you can come out, I'll be there on Sunday. Steve will be out there on Sunday. Hopefully some of our, our, our regulars here are going to be able to come out. And even if you don't want to run, cause I'm sure as hell not running five, five K, but yeah, all, all the info is right there. So uh, just go to uh, Steve's Twitter, Gallo 3310 and uh, all the information, the website, click, 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 boom. And 60 students, in the Cole's memory have been provided with scholarships and financial relief or aid towards their tuition or just, you know, like sometimes shit happens in families lives where they need help. And Steve and his family in, in honor of his uh, sister have helped out 
and a lot of people. So this is a, this is awesome. It's getting bigger every year and uh, we want to make it bigger than it's ever been this year. So um, thanks to everybody that's already donated and got involved. So praise for some good weather. It's freaking going up and down, up and down, up and down. Oh dude, the freaking, it was so windy today. today It's going to be terrible. It's going to be miserable tomorrow. Saturday is going to be miserable. So what's it supposed to be on Sunday? It's supposed to be cold, but, but dry, right? I got, I got high of 49, no rain at the moment, but earlier it was 55% chance of rain. So. Well, I, I guess it's supposed to rain all day Saturday. Sweet. Yeah. Just get it all out of the way on Saturday. I'm as long as it's dry, that's exactly. all like, that's perfect. If it's 45 yep. degrees, it's 45 degrees. You can dress 45 right. and sunny. I'll take it. Yep. Yep. Agreed. All right, dude, everybody subscribe at John Marks media and comment, follow, etc. Thanks for, uh, yeah. Thanks for everybody for tuning in. And we will uh, we will be back tomorrow night at nine o'clock. Until then, comment, subscribe, follow, like. whatever else. Like, like, yeah, like, like, <laughs> gotta like, gotta like. All right, see. Ya. See it.